Hey guys, we at the shop today. Just picked up this 15 foot skiff prospector in T4 Max. I got a trip coming up, so I'm gonna add some airbags, some knee pads, some thigh straps, redo some grab handles, put some skid plates on it, and I'll give you a little tutorial on how I go about doing that. So this is a brand new boat. Even though it's brand new, you're still gonna find that there's a fair bit of, of grit and grease that's, that's in them when they come from the factory. You can see here, uh, where the dust is stuck to that that oil, and that's just from when they have them in the mold. They have a an oil that they put on to help release them from the mold when they're formed. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take it outside, and we're going to give it a good pressure wash and scrub it down with some hot soapy water, get it cleaned up to start outfitting. Now that I got the boat washed up, I'm going to start on my outfitting. First thing I'm going to be doing is my thigh straps and my knee pads or knee cups. I'm just going to be doing them behind the bow seat as I'm going to be paddling this boat solo. If I was outfitting it as a tandem boat, it would be a similar process, but you'd be outfitting it in front of the bow seat and also in front of the stern seat for two paddlers. But nothing changes about this process. You just have to do it twice if it's a tandem canoe. All of my stuff that I'm using, I got from Mikey Outfitting. It's a really good resource for, for outfitting your canoe. One of the things that I found a little bit intimidating when I first started researching outfitting canoes was uh, which type of adhesive I was gonna use. So this is a T4MAX boat. Uh, if it's T4MX or Roylex, you're going to use the same adhesives. So you're going to use either Vinabond or HH66. Uh, those seem to be the most recommended and I've had good luck. I haven't used the Vinabond, but I have used HH66, which you can get from even just off Amazon or, or a local store, possibly. Uh, you can also use G-Flex. G-Flex is super strong, but it is a little bit more time consuming as each time that you prep a patch or anchor and you put it on, you need to tape it off, wait it, and wait a couple hours before you can move on to the next one. We're with the more contact adhesion style uh, adhesives. Once you set it, you can move on to the next one so you can speed up the process a bit and they're still, still very strong. If you're ordering from, from Mike Yee, he also has the option he'll supply you with, with the adhesive that you need and that he recommends for whichever type of boat you're working with. Uh, if you are working with a, an epoxy boat, so a Kevlar layup or, or similar, uh, you're going to want to either use your G-Flex or your Stay Bond is another adhesive. Um, also the prep is very important. If you're working with Royal X or T4 Max, you're going to want to use acetone to clean the, the boat surface before you apply your anchor. So I just have some acetone in a spray bottle. It makes it easy to spray it on a rag and wipe it down. You don't want to overdo it with the acetone as it can eat into the plastic and soften it up, but it will clean it up really well. So just a quick wipe and let it off gas for a minute before you start putting your glue down. Uh, if you're using one of the other adhesives that I mentioned, uh, you're going to want to use MEK on that and you can get that at most hardware stores. You just want to make sure that the whatever cleaner you're using to prep your boat is compatible with uh, your adhesive that you're using. So I know from looking at, at what's in this that it does have acetone in it, so I know that that's compatible with it. Um, you could also just use a rubbing alcohol, but it's not going to get as deep of a clean. When you start doing your, your knee pads or your knee cups, you're just going to use a contact cement. So these are a wearable item. They are going to get worn out uh, after a couple of years of using them. It's just a soft foam, so, so chunks will get taken out. So the contact cement makes it a little bit easier to replace them down the, down the road. So. I have some adhesive that was supplied by Mike E, or you can use pretty much any contact cement from your local hardware store. You just want to check that it's flammable, and if it's flammable, that means that it's going to be uh, waterproof. So if you use one that's not uh, 
not flammable, there's a good chance that once it gets saturated in water that that knee pad's gonna come off. I'm gonna start with the side anchor for the thigh strap. Um, normally you wanna keep it about a quarter inch down from the gunnel. The way that this, this seat is held in, I'm not gonna be able to get it quite that high, but it'll still be just fine. So I'm just gonna center it up on there and I'm using a dry erase marker to, to mark this out. You can also use uh, a pencil, but I find that the dry erase is easier to make a nice, easy to see line and it'll wipe right off when you're done. So got that marked out. One thing I like to do, it's completely optional, but uh, I like to just tape off the area. That way when I'm sanding and, and putting down glue, it's a lot easier to keep it nice and clean. So I'll tape just outside of that line and that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm, when I'm gluing to get my patch in there. Once I get it taped off, then I'll, I'll sand it off, sand it with just a, uh, I think I got 150 grit sandpaper, but you don't need anything too abrasive, just a nice light sandpaper to rough it up a little bit. Um, some people will recommend sanding the backside of the, the anchors as well. You could damage that, that stitching if you're sanding over it. If you were gonna sand it, maybe just stay back. You don't need to though. They're still gonna uh, hold very well without sanding them. Another nice thing when you tape it off is even when uh, when you wipe this down before you put the glue on and you wipe that line away, you still have a good layout for where your patch is going. Where if you sand it, wipe it down with the acetone, whether you use pencil or a dry erase, you're probably gonna lose that that line and it makes it a lot harder to position your your anchor exactly where you want it. All right, so now that I got that taped off, I'm just gonna give that a good scuff. Quick vacuum. I'm just gonna use a little bit of acetone on my rag and just give that Quick wipe. And I'm also gonna wipe down the back side of this patch. Then we just wanna give that a minute or two to make sure that all that acetone evaporates before we put our glue on. So I'm gonna use the HH66. Comes with a brush built into the cap, which is convenient. And I'm just gonna put a nice layer of that in here. With this glue, you only have to let it dry for about two to five minutes before you're ready to put your anchor on. Just try to get it nice and even. This is where the tape makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to be careful. And I also like to put my, my anchor on a piece of cardboard so I don't make a mess on whatever surface <clears throat> I'm working on. I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes until it's tacky. This isn't like your contact cements where it has to dry so that's completely um, not tacky to the touch. It shouldn't be gooey still. It should You should be able to touch it and just have um, light tackiness to it. If you wait too long, you get busy and it completely dries, you can just put another layer on over top. All right, that glues out a couple minutes to, to dry. So it's just a tiny bit tacky now. When you're placing these, you wanna start with one side and, and work your way over. That way you don't trap any air underneath it. So I can use that tape as a nice straight guide down the one side. I'm just gonna press it down with my finger as I go. Once you uh, start putting it down, there's no readjusting. So try to get it where you want it right off the bat. If you have a little, little roller, um, you can roll it out now. 
Uh, I had one, I'm not sure where it is, so I'm just gonna use the edge of this lighter. Just... If you're gonna get air trapped, it's gonna be underneath where that stitching is. So you can really work that area down and then just work any air out to the outside. And you can use just a good old finger to work it as well. And then you can peel your tape off and move on to the next one. Got the other side anchor installed. So now I'm gonna work on getting this front anchor for the thigh straps. So with this we want our center of our anchor to be about five inches in front of the seat. So to do that, I'm just gonna use a square here. Run that up to the seat. A little mark there. And our anchor is seven inches. So we're gonna want an inch and a half of space from that mark to the back of that. So we can put a mark there as well. I like to just use the seat and kind of eyeball up. If we look at our webbing here, we know this is the very center of our seat. So that's where I had the square. That mark's pretty close, but I would say our center is just a little to the right of that. And I like to put a little mark on the center of my anchor as well, so I can line that up. Now you don't need to get super fussy trying to measure everywhere. Um, you can get it pretty close eyeballing things. You can also use that front edge of the seat to see if it's, if your anchor's twisted at all. It's pretty good there. Depending on uh, the size of the paddler, you may need to move it forward or backwards. That's just a good kind of starting point. I'm pretty sure that's going to work well for me there. Once you install your thigh straps, they're going to be anchoring down here and then to those side anchors that we already installed. I'm just going to go ahead, mark this out, and glue it down using the same process as I did with the two side anchors. When you're gluing these down, one of the things you want to remember is that you got to keep that V facing forward. That's just so that when the thigh straps are, are fed through there, they're coming on a nice angle. It's not pulling on a weird, weird angle on your anchor. If you're not using one of these kits that has both of the anchors on, on one patch, you can accomplish the same thing by using uh, two individual ones. Uh, using the kit that has them both on, on one patch makes it easier here because it saves a bunch of measuring, but, and it's a bit stronger having that much more surface area. If you put a little mark on the center of your patch and when you have it taped off, also put another mark on the center there. It makes it a little bit easier when you go to glue it down to line up that center mark so you don't end up offset. While I was gluing that center anchor down, I did notice that because this is a tandem canoe that you'd normally be paddling facing the bow, uh, the seat is tilted that direction about a quarter inch front to back. Because I'm gonna be paddling it solo, I'm gonna switch these brackets around. That'll give me the quarter inch drop facing that way because that's the way that I'll be paddling it. That just makes it a little bit more comfortable for you, uh, especially when once you're kneeling, it gives a little bit more um, support. I'll also swap my yoke around. Uh, with the direction my yoke is right now, every time I paddle up to a portage, I would need to turn the canoe around 180 degrees. So we got the one uh, left thigh strap in there. I'll go ahead and put the other one in here and uh, so yeah, it's done. So it comes with two of these little stainless steel um, 
buckles. So you're going to use those on the top of the thigh strap there. There's a plastic buckle so that you can quickly release it or unclip it and get it out of your way. So start with one of these stainless buckles, thread it onto the strap. And then what you want is this tail to end up coming back forward. You're actually going to feed this in from the front underneath that side anchor. Feed that back through itself. And then you can put your, uh, your clip onto that strap. So on one side has a, a sharp not sharp, but uh, an edge pointed back forward. That's where you want the tail of your strap to come back through so that it, when it's pulled tight, it's not gonna pull through. So you come up through the, the hole closest to the clip and then back through past that edge that's leading forward. So once that's through and there's tension on it, it's not gonna pull through and the strap can just clip on like that. For the bottom, first thing you're going to do is thread that strap through the stainless piece. We're going to come under the center here. Can be a little bit tight, but we'll just wiggle through there. Once you have them on, you'll have to get in there, play around with it a little bit and kind of get it where that strap sits nice and centered over, over your thigh. Now that I have both these in here, I'll be able to climb in, get these positioned and get them glued down as well. So to place my knee pads, I'm just going to climb in the canoe. Make my way into my paddling position. Slide them underneath my knees. And this, I always kind of like to start first by getting my, my bum where it feels comfortable on the seat. Because you want to be comfortable, especially if you're running long white water sections where you'll be in this position for quite a while. So get that comfortable. Get my knees comfortable and then you can if you just glued your anchors don't go crazy tightening up those those straps you want to give it a good 12 hours to to dry before you're putting a lot of pressure on them but that'll give you a good idea I like to kind of angle these these knee pads with the same angle that my knees are are out on no fancy measuring required here um, I just like to get the pressure point of my knee centered on that foam so that if my leg is to shift forward or back, I'm still gonna um, have my knee on that nice soft foam. And then also if a different paddler's in here, it gives a little bit of wiggle room. Once I have those where I like, I can kind of eyeball that they look equal to each other. And you can also use that center anchor you already glued in as a reference point. Keep your marker handy because if you have to climb out and get it, they're gonna slide out of position on you. And I'll just mark my four corners on each one. Just finished letting this contact cement uh, set up. I end up having to do two coats on, on the foam, one coat on the canoe. Uh, you can tell if you need more because it'll be really dull. I don't know if you can see, but it should have a little bit of a shine to it once it's dry, but it shouldn't be sticky at all. Same here. On this, it was kind of blotchy. You could see some dull spots, so I went ahead, did a second coat, let it dry. You have up to an hour to assemble these after you put the, the contact cement on. So 
you have tons of working time, which is nice. You don't have to be in a rush. So I usually just kind of start with the one corner. And you can kind of line up where it's gonna go. If you start getting this on crooked, um, there's no straightening it out. So just take your time getting it positioned. I've got the one side rolled up and I'm just gonna roll this down on here. Give it a good firm push in there. Make sure all that contact cement is bonded. And that's our thigh straps and kneeling pads complete. So that's ready to go. Next we're gonna move on to doing those airbag cages. Before I start doing my airbag cages, I'm just gonna redo these grab handles on either end. These work all right, but the way that these are installed currently is on the end of this rope, it just has a stopper knot, so it's just pulling out on the, the hull of the boat. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this and I'm gonna make it a continuous loop with a double fisherman's knot on the inside. Currently, if you're pulling on it, it could put a lot of strain on, on the one side of the boat and potentially pop that out. If your canoe is pinned on a rock and you're using a hull system, there's gonna be a ton of force on this. So by making it a continuous loop, it's gonna spread that pressure out and the knot on the inside will stop it from being able to collapse and it'll just make this uh, way stronger. I'm gonna try to demonstrate just on the table here how to tie that double fisherman's knot on the bow of the canoe. So. You feed one rope in, this illustrates the, uh, the bow there. One in from the other side. So those cross over each other. So we're coming around on itself, making one full loop. Around again, back through. that tight so then that was our our bow here we'd be pulling that that down because we're working underneath the deck plate we'd have to leave this loop a little bit bigger and we do the same thing here oh no and once twice back through and those will pull together that gives us our grab loop out and then you can just trim off the excess here it's easier to start with a long piece and then trim it off after so when you're pulling here if the the hull of the canoe is going to flex in. It's going to hit that knot and it's going to give it support on either side instead of having just a stopper knot on either side where it's going to pull out. This edge here was really sharp from drilling it. So I just took this deburring tool and rounded it off nice so that the rope is on a nice smooth edge there where it won't be at risk of being uh, rubbing and getting cut through. If you don't have a deburring tool like this, you could just use a file or some sandpaper. All right, so feed one end in one side. And then in the other. Pull that back. So cross our strands over. First double fisherman there. Now, save us pulling through a whole bunch afterwards. We can start to pull a little extra through here. It is a bit of a 
pain tying this knot under the uh, the bow, but if you get it tied out here, then you can kind of reach in and uh, take up the extra slack afterwards. So we'll tie our second. So right now, if we were to pull it through, we're gonna put a pretty big loop out here. So we gotta work up in here, slightly awkward, but I'm just gonna work this extra slack through the knot. That's what you end up with there. Kind of just enough you can get your hand in there. You don't want it too big where it's gonna be uh, entanglement hazard. And you can see in here, once the knot's tied, it's just butted right up against the hull on either side. So super, super strong, not gonna come untied. The way this factory one was tied with just a overhand stopper knot. Um, that could also come untied pretty easily. I can just untie that with one hand. So not as secure as what we have here. And this is nice purple to match the outfitting too. So bonus. So now that uh, I've got these grab loops done, uh, I can start working on the bag cages. The reason I wanted to do these first is once I have all my lacing in here for the bags, it's just going to be harder to to tie those knots. When you're fitting airbags, if you're just gonna be using the canoe strictly for uh, going out for the day, running white water, then the bigger the airbag you can fit in there, the better. Um, because I'm gonna be using this as a tripping canoe, I'm gonna use a little bit smaller airbags so I still have some space for, for my gear. By using the smaller ones, it's also gonna allow me to paddle this tandem if I wanted to, or if I use a larger airbag, um, it would work solo, but if I needed somebody in the bow seat um, to paddle tandem, then we wouldn't have enough space. So I'm going to be using these um, smaller airbags from, from NRS. You can buy these as a, a kit. I think they call it their tandem tripping kit. Or tripping kit, I don't know. Um, I also thought of putting in a, a larger airbag, which would work great if I didn't need the space. So that would actually fit in there pretty nicely. This is out of uh, one of my solo whitewater boats. Um, with the smaller bag cages, if I ever want to extend it, I can add a few more more clips and some a couple more anchors, and I could just make that bag cage a little bit bigger, or I could collapse it back down for the the smaller bags, so that's something I may do in the future. If you're watching this and, and you're curious as to the reason to outfit your canoe with airbags, it's so that if you if you tip your canoe and it's floating down a rapid, that extra buoyancy is gonna keep it floating higher in the water. And then if it does hit into a rock or, or log or something in the water, uh, it's more likely to bounce off as opposed to getting pinned and, and wrapped around. So it's just a bit of a, a safety factor there to help prevent damage to your canoe. So I'm gonna get this marked out and we'll start making the bag cages. Got this air bag inflated to roughly the amount of air that it's gonna, gonna need to fill this space once I have the cage here. So make sure you get it tucked all the way up into the uh, end of the canoe. Then you kind of just have to use a little bit of vision as to how this is gonna gonna fill out. You might have to add more or less air to to kind of really see how it's gonna be. But once you get it to close to the volume you think it'll have in it, you kind of just hold it nice and square. Think about your lacing is gonna be coming across here and down. You don't want the bag to be flopping around, you kind of want it to fill that whole area where you have your bag lacing. So, same as before, no fancy measuring. I'm just gonna put a mark right there and that'll kind of be the center point for my anchors. Uh, once I have that marked, I can pull that out. Now, because this is a 
symmetrical hull canoe, meaning the bow and the stern are both shaped the same. You can take this measurement, find a, a point to measure from. So I'm about 32 inches there. I can use that same measurement uh, when I mark out the other end of the canoe instead of guessing around and it'll keep it nice and, and symmetrical looking. I'm going to be doing one anchor in the middle and one on either side. That way once I have my lacing running back and forth here, I can kind of make a, a W shape and that's going to capture, uh, capture the bag and keep it from going anywhere if the canoe is floating down through some, some white water. If I was using larger bags, I'd also add a, a piece of webbing from the grab handle back to my, my anchor just to give it a little bit more strength and so you're not just relying on that lacing to hold it in, but for the small bags, I'm just gonna use some lacing. So got that mark there at my 32 inches, just like when we were putting the anchor in for our thigh straps. It's really hard to measure um, on a canoe, just there's so many curves to it. So I just kind of eyeball up my center there, lay it down and the, the center one's kind of the easiest because it'll sit right in that valley. But once you have it sitting there, if you stand at the end of the canoe, you can get that looking nice and straight. Process for gluing these down is the same as our other anchor. Mark it out, tape it off, sand it, clean with acetone, uh, apply our, oops, apply our glue to it, and then uh, stick it down. There's one. Now, when you go to do your next one, you don't want it up too high or you're not gonna get a, a nice lacing to hold the, the airbags in. So it'll actually be down a little bit close. Um, that way when, when your lace comes from here, you're gonna get that nice W to capture the bag. Probably somewhere around there. Same thing, I'm just gonna eyeball up where they're in line. Now, what I'll usually do here is I will measure the distance between these. So I'm right at eh, four, four and an eighth. And I'll transfer that to the other side just so that they are spaced out evenly. So I kind of like to just stand over it have a look, everything looks nice and straight, symmetrical to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off and get ready to glue those in. The nice thing with the dry erase marker oops, is if you mark this out and something doesn't look um, like it's where you want it to be, you can just wipe that marker off and uh, remark it. So now that I've got my three anchors in, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these little P clips. These ones are are stainless steel and then vinyl dipped. Um, you can also just get them in a, a plastic, which are a little bit lighter, but they're so small. Uh, I'm not too worried. I like the strength of these stainless ones. So I'm gonna space those out along the gunnel, probably every four inches for my my lacing. Now you might have to adjust your spacing as you go. I'm just gonna line this one up with the center, kind of want them to end up being centered across where I put those anchors. So let's just see if I go four inch spacing from here, where is that gonna put me? That should work out pretty good. Yeah, it's almost perfect. And it's hard to mark exactly where you're gonna drill there. I usually just kind of stand on my head and, and eyeball where my drill bit's starting. I'm gonna use 3 16 rivets. So I'll use a 3 16 drill bit, drill all my holes and then pop rivet those in. Go ahead and mark the other side as well. 
So I got my 316th drill bit. Uh, first thing I'm just gonna take one of these clips, stick it under um, about where I want it to go, and just see where my how far back my hole needs to be. Then I'm just gonna drill because of the angle of the drill, it might want to walk in on you, so you kind of got to get some pressure and, and get it going in um, where you want it to. Just be careful you don't drill out through the top. I'm just eyeballing up my center. Draw both sides out while I'm at it. I'm just using these uh, 3 16 by quarter inch aluminum pop rivets. You can get these at any hardware store and just a, a hand riveter. If you're looking for these uh, P-clips, these are actually uh, an electrical supply. So I think even Home Depot would have these um, in plastic. I'm not sure about stainless, but any electrical supplier will be able to get these for you. I bought this whole bag, it was like 20 bucks or something. So they're, they're pretty cheap. So to put these in, just gotta make sure you have the right size collet in here. Your rivet will slide right in. And you're just gonna pump that handle a couple times. Pop off, and that'll give you a nice anchor point right there. Now that I got all my P clips on there, I'm just going to take some accessory cord and I'll, I'll weave that through here. Find my center. The way I like to do it is I actually like to feed my, my cord up from the end that it was already coming from. And that just kind of makes a nice little loop when it crosses over there. So do the one side first. Cords long enough. Once I have them both to there, I can start tightening that up a bit, pull that extra slack out. Doesn't need to be ridiculously tight, but you don't want them flopping all over the place either. So this is always this part's always easy. Remembering how I like to do this is always a little bit more tricky. See what we can come up with here. So I just started lacing up the other end of the canoe. Um, once I do this top lacing, I found if I just tie an overhand knot on either side to keep the tension, then when I do the lacing on the the end of the bag here, I don't have to have it pulling so hard on the on the anchors to keep tension on this. So I'll take this 
this tail that's here and I'll just run it straight down to that first anchor up through come over top of my top lace in here through the center anchor and then I'll double this up through this side it can be a little bit hard to get that second strand through the p-clip and we can put a little bit of tension on here. It doesn't need to be crazy. Take this tail, we'll wrap it around and we'll do two half hitches on the, the inside of that. So just around that strand twice, back up to the, the other side of that knot and another half hitch. And then that'll work just as a adjustable um, slip knot so you can just tension up from right there shouldn't slip back on you hold tension then the same thing on the other side there you have it now that I've got my bag caged all laced up I'm in my shop, I can cheat and use my compressor to blow it up. As you're inflating it, you might have to play around with it a little bit, get tucked in there nice. There you have it. It's ready to go. Here's our end result. Got the new grab handles on there. Airbag cages, our thigh straps and knee pads, and our other airbag cage back here. It turned out pretty good. Just grab my my pack and my my barrel because that's what I'm going to be taking on this next trip to see how it fits, and they actually fit perfectly in there. So. That's good. What do you think, Willie? Ready to go? So I have a couple anchors on either side just in front of the yoke here. What I'm gonna use those for is just to secure my, my spare paddle or both of my paddles when I'm portaging. So what I've found seems to work all right is just using a piece of paracord and then using that, that same fisherman's knot that we used in the, in the bow and the stern on those grab handles. Um, but instead of just doing the, the two wraps, um, I like to do an extra one there. So three wraps, so then that'll slide on there, but it'll also hold some pretty good tension. So when I wanna store my paddle in here, slide the handle through. Snug that up and I'm just gonna keep my paddle in there pretty secure, at least secure enough for uh, for portaging or also just to store a paddle there. And then if I need to get it out, I just have to grab the knot, give it a little, little wiggle, pull that paddle out. Just try to get a, a closer look for you guys on tying that knot. So we're gonna wrap this strand around. So you can actually put your finger in there to, to capture it. So you're making one loop, two loops, three loops, and then this tail is just gonna go through where your finger was. Tighten that down nice. And then to stop that from coming off the end, I'll just tie same same knot basically, but this would be called a, a barrel knot when it's not capturing another strand. So that's just a stopper so this can't slide off. 
and it lets me know which which strand that's sliding on and which one to pull to tighten. Now that we got the inside of the canoe done, we're going to move on to doing the skid plates on it. So let's go over what you're going to need. You're going to need uh, some Kevlar felt skid plates. Uh, you can buy them pre-cut. I got these from Trailhead Paddle Shack. Um, shipped them super quick. I think they were like $40. Um, you can cut your own, but you need really good scissors. Cut that Kevlar felt. Uh, I'm going to be using G-Flex Epoxy, which works awesome on, uh, on skid plates because it has a little bit more give to it than, than some other epoxies, that, so it's less likely to, to crack or delaminate. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to tape the skid plates on where we want them, um, tape all around them, give it a good sand with some 60 grit sandpaper, put a layer of, mix up our epoxy, put a layer of it onto the hull, lay our skid plate into it, followed by another coat of epoxy to wet out that fabric. Uh, we'll get it smoothed out nicely and then let it dry and start on the other side. So. We'll start walking through this process. All right, so we're gonna lay this out. We need one of these. So kind of where the the hull stops curving, it's kind of just just past that is where you want it. So I think on this it'll probably be yeah probably about ten inches on here. So I'll just put a little mark there. When you're installing these. The larger end oops, uh, goes on the bottom of the boat, and then the smaller end is going to wrap up around on the stems. So I should take that stuff off of there. So we'll just start taping it in place. there just try to center that up Get a piece of tape on it pull this back tight a little bit of tension on it you just have to center everything up as you go pull that tight when you do wet out the fabric it is gonna stretch and take that shape a little bit better. Just try to get that nice and even. You can see that um, it will take the shape really nicely. So what we're going to want to do now is we'll tape around it and we'll leave about a quarter inch. Um, that way if the felt stretches out um, we're going to be within our area that we've sanded and just make sure that you have epoxy all the way to the, the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this off. Now that I got this all taped off, I taped off around where the felt goes and then I also taped a garbage bag on either side just to protect the hull if there's any runoff. We don't want to make a mess down the side of the canoe. So I use some 60 grit sandpaper, give this a good sand. Uh, you just want to be careful that you don't tear the tape off it while you're sanding it. Um, once I get it sanded, I'll wipe it down with some acetone and then we'll be ready to start epoxying the skid plates on. So you want to sand that until you don't see any more shiny spots. It should have a nice uh, rough texture to it. If you uh, damage your tape at all, um, 
just throw a couple pieces over. I did tear a couple spots out, trying to sand up to that edge. Some people don't like to put skid plates on a, a new canoe because they do add a little bit of drag. They prefer to wait until it starts to have a little bit of damage and then cover that up with a skid plate. Um, but I know that this is going to be uh, taking some abuse, grinding over some rocks, and so I'm just going to try to be preventative, throw the skid plate on there now before there's any damage to the hull. Um, there is a bit of drag, but I'm not trying to win any races, so I'm fine with that. Wipe down with our acetone. If you're working with a Royal X boat, after you clean it, you should um, torch treat it, meaning you just take a, a propane torch and just quickly run the flame over that, over the surface, and it will oxidize the, the plastic, which will help with the adhesion with the epoxy. Uh, I haven't heard of anyone doing that with T4 Max. Maybe just because it's a newer material. If you know better, if you should or not, let me know. Uh, I'm not going to. I've used G Flex uh, on these boats before and it, it seems to hold well without flame treating. But even if you were to flame treat this, it wouldn't hurt anything. So if you want to, go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up the epoxy now. I do have some of these little containers with measurements on the side. You mix this at a one to one ratio. Uh, if you don't have a, a container with, with the measurements on the side, you can always just put a mark evenly on each one. Then you can just use that mark to measure out equal amounts. I'm just gonna use the numbers on here because it's easy. So this is our epoxy. This is our hardener. So I'm gonna pour this in here. Now this is um, a little bit fussy with temperature so I had this sitting out in the sun where it's a little bit warmer it's not real warm in the shop so this was was pretty thick um, I think most of the working times are based on it being 22 degrees Celsius uh, it's only about 15 in here so I warmed this up a bit also had a hair dryer going underneath the 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 boat for a little bit just to kind of warm up the hull as well um, if you can work somewhere where it's a little bit warmer temperature I would do it um, I do it outside today because it is nice and warm but it's super windy and I don't want a bunch of stuff blowing into this so, so we'll put our, our equal parts in here then we're gonna mix it up uh, really well just using a stir stick we have about 45 minutes working time, so you don't have to rush too crazy with it. If this was colder, though, this would be, you know, like the consistency of honey. It'd be really thick. It wouldn't wet out the fabric as well. So heating it up a little bit um, helps with that. It will reduce your working time a little bit, but it, I didn't get it crazy hot. I just got it to um, probably the proper temperature it should be at. Uh, wear gloves when you're working with this too. You're going to be pushing down on that felt skin plate and you're going to get it all over your hands guaranteed. I'm just going to use a cheap paintbrush for this. Uh, you can cut the bristles a little bit shorter as well, just um, so they're a little bit stiffer for spreading it out if you need to. Alright, so we're going to take our Foxy, I'm just gonna put a nice thick layer on here. Not so thick that it's running all over the place, but you need a bit there to help wet out the fabric. You see how I did for my amount here to 300 milliliters. I don't know if that's how much I need or not, but I just took a guess. All right. lay this back on you will be able to slide it around a little bit so you don't have to worry about getting it 
exactly perfect right off the bat. Does take a bit of a bit of time for the fabric to start absorbing it, but I find kind of dabbing it helps push it down in. You can always go and put a little bit more over top. I'm just trying to get this spread out evenly. Just going around the edge now and just putting a little bit extra in there to kind of smooth the transition from the hull to the Kevlar felt. So we'll let that set up for probably about half an hour. Um, before it's completely dry though, you wanna pull all of this tape off of here. Um, because if this epoxy dries, it's run onto the tape, it's gonna be really hard to get that uh, tape off from there. But it'll have set up enough that it won't be running off. Being probably close to an hour since I put this on, um, I can touch it now, it's not crazy sticky, it's still pretty tacky. Um, so now I'm gonna peel off all my tape because I know that none of this epoxy is gonna run down on the side of the canoe now. So for the most part, that left a pretty nice line. Down here where I peeled around the corner, there's a few little hairs on that. What you can do is just kind of give your finger a little lick like you would with caulking and just push those back in, smooth it on out. 